Welcome, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I recognize we might have a few people join us late, as well as some folks that are going to be watching the recording. My name is Mindy Levin. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am a faculty member in the Department of Health, Behavior, and Society, as well as the founder and director of SOURCE, the Community Engagement and Service Learning Center. Thanks for being here today. We are here to talk about Baltimore public health practice opportunities that are available with SOURCE. I'm joined by one of my colleagues, Izzat Shahade, from our team. Izzat's going to be helping me out today. I'm unable to see the chat while I'm presenting, so I'm going to present some information. If you have questions along the way, feel free to add into the chat, and then I'm certainly going to leave some time at the end to answer questions that you all have as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Really what I want to do today is do a very brief introduction to SOURCE for those of you that haven't heard about us or need to have a little refresher. I'm also going to be talking about the Baltimore Community Practicum course. It's one of our very special courses at the Bloomberg School that we offer to our public health students. That includes built-in public health practice activities, and we are currently accepting applications for the Baltimore Community Practicum course. I'm going to sh share all about it with you. And then I'm also going to go into detail about a few other public health practice opportunities that are available through our center. But let me first start out by giving you that brief introduction to SOURCE. Hopefully you all have heard about us or recall hearing about us at times that you were going through orientation. But the work that we do at SOURCE is to engage all three of Hopkins Health Professional Schools, that's public health, nursing, and medicine, and our Baltimore communities in mutually beneficial partnerships that promote health and social justice. And all the work that we do at SOURCE is guided by our core values, which includes reciprocity, justice, service, and collaboration. Uh, we're gonna be giving you some links. We'll drop it in the chat, but we'll also in a follow-up email to those of you that have registered for the session, we'll certainly add more details, but we, a lot of this information is readily, readily available on our SOURCE homepage. So we encourage you to check it out. We do have a great, team of individuals here at SOURCE. So I've introduced myself, but there are also other colleagues that are a part of the great work that we do. Uh, we also have some part-time folks and student program assistants that work in our office. As public health students, I always like to highlight the fact that we have a few deans from the Bloomberg School that serve on our governing board, including Drs. Vanya Jones, Josh Sharpstein, and Mike Ward. And we also have a community council. So we have leadership from our network of over 100 community-based organizations that work with SOURCE all year round. I'm also plugging the fact that we have a number of upcoming leadership opportunities for students that you might want to consider. We are currently accepting applications for students that want to serve on our student governing board and represent individuals. So for public health students that are not in the MPH program, we are currently accepting applications. We've actually just selected and we'll be announcing the new MPH students, but this is a great leadership opportunity to work with students, faculty, staff, deans from across the three schools as well as community partners. And you can learn more on our website. And then for any of you out there that are eligible for federal work study, we are currently hiring for a number of positions on our team. And I highly encourage you to take a look because um, we're looking forward to bringing some new student program assistants on our team this year. And all this information is also available on our website. We have the, the job descriptions available as well. All right, so the last few things that I wanna share about source, as I mentioned already, we partner with over 100 nonprofits that are all here in Baltimore City. And you can take a look at our website to review our entire online directory of partnering organizations. And they are all organized by these various categories. So I always say if there is a particular population that you're interested in partnering with, or if there is a health topic that piques your interest, we likely have a partnering organization in our network that we can gladly connect you with for engagement opportunities. All right, so really what I wanna do now is talk about this special Baltimore Community Practicum course, give you the highlights because we are currently working to have student applications come in with the deadline of Tuesday, September 17th. So it's just a few weeks um, before that deadline is upon us. First, let me share what the Baltimore Community Practicum course is. Um, Baltimore Community Practicum is a mouthful, so sometimes I'm going to refer to it as BCP for short. 
But uh, BCP is actually a credit earning course that provides real world public health practice opportunities for our public health students. And this is a course that is open to all students at the Bloomberg School, as long as you are registered throughout the entire 24-25 academic school year, you are eligible to participate. We always have students from across all the degree programs, masters and doctoral levels alike. For those of you that happen to be in the MPH program, this is also one of those courses that would fully meet the MPH practicum requirement. I do have students from all degree programs, but if you're MPH, it does meet that MPH practicum requirement. The other thing that I'll mention about the Baltimore Community Practicum course is that it is one of the core required courses of their certificate in community-based public health. There are a lot of fabulous certificate programs across the Bloomberg School. If you are interested in the community-based public health certificate, this is a required course. So you are able to bonus, double, have this experience as well as have it count towards your certificate program. Now this course is unique in that students actually have to apply to get into the course. It's not just register and I'm in the course. And we are always telling folks that we do the student recruitment and applications in term one, and then the course runs throughout both second and third terms. You have an opportunity to actually review the available projects or the internships that are available to our students for this academic year. And you would be participating in your internship throughout second and third terms, while also having our, our classroom time throughout second and third terms as well. We do have a great number of community-based organization partners, a nice mix that are involved with the program this year. And as a matter of fact, the vast majority of the projects this year are opportunities to engage in hybrid work with the organization. Hybrid means that sometimes you'll be in person while sometimes you can work remotely. There are a few of the community-based organizations that have requested students that are going to be working in person for the majority of their time. And we do have one option this year for one organization that's fine with this really being almost an entirely remote experience. And all that information, I'll, I'll show you where to see it and where you can learn a little bit more. The main thing to mention here is that every single student does need to be available to collaborate with our community-based organizations or CBOs during Baltimore business hours. So needing to be able to get to, physically get to most of these organizations is one of the requirements because it is the Baltimore Community Practicum course and we're doing work with our local partners. Now, let me share a little bit more about the, the great work happening um, with the BCP course and some of the requirements. So as I mentioned, this course does run throughout second and third terms. So you absolutely have to register and complete both terms. This is a multi-term course. Second term is really when you are getting to know your organization and feeling like you're just getting started. Whereas third term, you really have made relationships, understand what you're going to be working on and can jump right in. We do have a weekly seminar. The weekly seminar is definitely a mix of some of the sessions are synchronous and we're doing it live and others are asynchronous. Oftentimes that means that I'm asking you to review something, read something, watch something, and do some other type of engagement with the material. For second term, it's important to note that the weekly seminar is on Tuesday afternoons from 3.30 to 4.20. And then in third term, we do meet on Tuesdays during the lunchtime and we keep it casual and people are eating their lunches. We have a lot of conversation-based engagement. I believe that all of the projects this year are asking for students to commit to working four hours per week. On occasion, some organizations request eight hours a week, but four hours a week is about the amount of time that you're going to be spending with your partner on your project, whether you're doing that fully in person or as, in or as a hybrid option. And then we will have students register for the class once they've actually been accepted into the class and accepted for a particular internship that we have available. The vast majority of our students will end up registering for two credits in second term, as well as two credits in third term. 
That's really the norm when students are working about four hours per week with their partner and community-based organization. But there's a little bit of wiggle room there if students are working more hours than that. But all those details we make sure we cover when students are being welcomed into the class. And obviously throughout second and third term, students are working on their projects with their organizations. And there are a number of course assignments, some online modules or readings. Every student in the BCP class will put together their educational plan. And at the very end of the course, there is a final paper. And we also have final presentations where we invite our community partners to participate and be there for final presentations. So as I mentioned, we have this weekly seminar. So what I really want to share is the items that we're covering during the seminar. Again, a mix of synchronous and asynchronous sessions, but we will be talking a great deal about what it means to be in a community academic partnership. And through that, we're going to talk about some of the core tenets of critical service learning pedagogy. We will be mirroring and understanding community-based participatory research steps. Although these are not research projects, they are public health practice. There are some elements of CBPR that are involved. And we'll also talk about the concept of civic professionalism. All of you will really be getting to know your site, your organization, your host community-based organization very well. And we're gonna be talking about what it means to partner between academia and our local communities and some of those best practices as well as communication skills. And because all the work that we're doing is very focused on our population and our local community, we are also going to be diving in to understand a little bit more about the history here in Baltimore, the relationship between Johns Hopkins and our local community, some of the health issues, as well as the assets that we have in our community. And this is something that regardless of your time here in Baltimore, whether you move away from Baltimore, and work in other communities around the globe, we are modeling some of the approaches to community academic partnerships with everybody having the experience of doing the work in partnership with Baltimore organizations. I wanted to highlight just a few of the BCP opportunities that are available for this academic year. All of the organizations have a, a wide range of types of projects as well as skill sets they're looking for. They're working with different audiences. I've got everything from working with trafficking survivors, LGBTQ plus populations, people experiencing homelessness. There are a few that are working with young people, foster youth. So this is just a few examples that are focusing on evaluating an evaluation plan for a branch's internship with Parks and People. That's a youth-based internship. There's a project with the Asylee Women's Program, Asylee Women's Enterprise, that is building bridges to stability for foreign-born trafficking survivors. It does require Spanish language skills. Um, so making sure that we highlight a few of those opportunities. I actually think that I have two projects this year that require Spanish speaking students for the projects. There's medical outreach and a couple other projects with healthcare for the homeless um, and a lot of just exciting examples to share with each of you coming from a lot of different areas across the city. Go ahead, do that. So let me talk briefly about the BCP application process. So we are currently live with our student recruitment phase of BCP. On the very first day of first term, we actually went live with all of the Baltimore Community Practicum project options. So hopefully you've actually seen some emails come out through Hopkins groups to announce all the different projects through BCP. We've also been sharing this information with the MPH program. It's been in the speed read a few times. It's in our source weekly service scoop. And so the main date to know is that your application deadline is Tuesday, September 17th by 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. There is, um, we'll give you, and we'll drop this in the actual direct site to the practicum opportunity site, a URL that we'll give you here. Thank you, Azat. 
you are able to review all of the available projects. And when you are submitting your application, we do allow you to apply to a maximum of three BCP projects. A couple other dates to keep in mind, after your application deadline of the 17th, we work quickly to organize and clean all those applications and share it with our review committee. And we will end up having students that are selected to move on to interviews. We usually send the top three to four students per project to interview with the community-based organization. There's about a two week window to conduct your interviews. And that'll be from September 25th through October 9th to get those interviews scheduled and completed with your preceptors. And it's really going to be up to you and the organization to figure out if you're going to do an in-person interview or if you're going to do your interview remotely. We're fine with either one. Again, one of the benefits of in-person, particular, particularly if it's an organization that you'd be working in person or doing some hybrid work, is that you get to go and see where they're located, see what your commute might be like, et cetera. And then by October 9th, we are asking all of the preceptors, as well as all the students that were involved with the interviews to confirm with us if they would accept that BCP project if it were offered to them. The partner and community-based organizations will also be ranking, rank ordering the students that they've interviewed so we can make a final match. And we will notify everybody of the final placements of who's going to be working on which BCP projects by October 11th. This also gives you ample time to register for the BCP course for second term, and you'll be able to like jump right into second term with beginning on your project. So I want to share a couple of tips for you about applying to BCP. Keep these things in mind. Again, we are open to you reviewing all of the available internships right now, so we'll encourage you to do so. And when you're reviewing all those different internship options, don't limit yourself to just one opportunity. Again, we give you the opportunity to apply to up to three. If you legitimately only see one opportunity that you're interested in, then certainly only submit one application for that one project. However, just know that we really won't know until the deadline and we're reviewing all the applications, which are the most popular projects this year. And sometimes they can be competitive, highly competitive. Like we might have like 20 different students apply for the same project, but other times there are some of those projects that have a little bit less interest, or maybe there's a skill set that not everybody has. So for example, I mentioned there's two that requires someone that speaks Spanish and has fluency. So that would automatically rule out a lot of our student applicants, but there are quite a few students that we also know would have that Spanish language capability. When you're reviewing all of these different BCP projects, take a look at the requirements and the skills that the organizations are searching for. Again, sometimes they're going to have preferred skills or required skills listed in their descriptions. For each of the BCP projects that you decide to apply for and express interest in, you will end up needing to craft a personal statement for each of those opportunities. So for example, let's say you selected three, your maximum of three projects. You'll have a separate statement for each of those three projects. And this is your opportunity to say like why you are interested in that particular project, how you might fit that particular project's needs based on the skill sets and the experiences that they are looking for. Make it relate to your future goals and your interests. Again, all the faculty that are reviewing the student applications don't necessarily know who you are. As a matter of fact, we ask them to recuse themselves if they do know someone and we'll have somebody else review a particular student application. And so for us, we're getting to know you as what is written in your personal statement. So I just have to highlight the fact that those personal statements are incredibly, incredibly important. And then lastly, I'll also encourage you to plan ahead. Think about other commitments as well as your degree requirements when you have certain courses that you need to take, you're able to see that in second term, the class meets on Tuesdays from 3.30 to 4.20. And in third term, we're meeting during that lunchtime on Tuesdays. So this is helping everyone to plan ahead so you know that you can actually commit to the BCP course as well as to the actual project that you'll be completing with the organization. 
Oh, where can you find all this fabulous information? There's a number of links um, as that will continue to drop these within the chat and we will email them out to everybody that signed up today. But if you go to our homepage, source.jhu.edu and actually just do backslash BCP, there you're gonna see a lot more information about the Baltimore Community Practicum course, a brief overview. And we also have a list of our frequently asked questions that we've received over the years about the course. And then there's also some comparisons to some other similar courses and engagement opportunities that are internship based here at the school. I'll also highlight the practicum opportunity site. This is one of those sites that requires you to log in. It is at the School of Public Health portal. But there, once you are in the practicum opportunity site, and I will show you that at the very end of my slides here, there's an opportunity to click on type of opportunity. And what you will be selecting from the type of opportunity is the Baltimore Community Practicum course. And once you select Baltimore Community Practicum, you'll see all of the different projects that are available. As a matter of fact, as you're reading through each of those BCP projects, you will also see for each project that it's gonna give you a list. Um, at the end, it'll say, like, how do I apply? And it's gonna give you the link that will take you to our online application, which we can also share with you that direct link to our online application. And throughout the process, if you do have questions that come up, please do not hesitate whatsoever. Reach out to us at source at jhu.edu. We're happy to answer questions, get you connected, and make sure that you have all the information that you need to prepare for BCP. Okay, let me take a second here to share a little bit more about other public health practice opportunities that we have available through SOURCE, just to highlight a few options for each of you. We are always hosting events and special programs across all three of the health professional schools. So there's a lot of options for public health practice. I will say that we do get requests for MPH and MSPH students to help find practicum opportunities, capstones, or field placements with their, with our network of organizations. And we certainly have those opportunities that will be coming up throughout the year. I will say that at this point in time, all of our currently available and already identified practicum activities for the MPH students and some MSPH students are a part of our BCP course. They've all been brought into the BCP course as a, we kick off the academic year, but throughout the year, we will have other opportunities that we will share with our students. Oftentimes those are shared through our source weekly service scoop. As I mentioned before, we have federal work study positions. We'll have positions that we'll announce to support our source team. Some of them are connected to public health practice opportunities. But we will also have some of our partnering community-based organizations that will also hire for federal work study. So we'll continue to share those through our source weekly service group as well. I'm going to share a little bit of information about the Connection and Community Consultants, which is our short-term small team consulting program that we run. And then we also help to support a range of four-credit service learning courses that are offered at the Bloomberg School. We do a whole bunch of other stuff around supporting student groups and social justice work. And I briefly mentioned the certificate in community-based public health. Again, the BCP course is one of the core requirements. So every student in that certificate program will also have a real world public health practice experience while they are working to earn that certificate here at the Bloomberg School. But to share a bit more about the connection. Again, I mentioned that this is our Community Consultants Program, we call it the Connection for short. And the Connection puts together small teams of students. Small teams are usually three to five students per team. And these are also students from across all three health professional schools. So they're largely public health teams, but we usually have you know, some medicine and some nursing students that will also participate. The projects are also short-term in nature. They're intentionally short-term. We created this program years ago with students and community partners that wanted to have an experience to develop their public health skills and make a difference without having to make a long-term commitment. So these short-term projects tend to be about six to eight weeks long. The projects that we're doing in partnership with community-based organizations fall around these categories of 
strategic consulting, fundraising strategy and helping to write small grants, doing all different types of performance measurement, as well as communications consulting. This is one of those opportunities that also allows MPH students to partially meet the MPH practicum requirement. All these projects can earn up to 50 hours. As a matter of fact, the students over the years, we've been running this program for a long time, most of the students that have been involved with connection projects say that throughout those six to eight weeks that they've been involved with their project, they're working about three to four hours per week on their project. So it's a great opportunity to get involved and make a, make a difference, develop your skills without making that long-term commitment. A few other things that I'll mention about the connection. Uh, the connection, we have plenty of details available on our website, but in order to be considered for the connection, we do ask everybody to submit what we call our consultant profile form. We do have an online form where you Tell us who you are, what department you're in, what degree program you're working towards. And you also have to upload your resume or your CV. So it's getting us a little bit about who you are and whether you've had no experience in these areas. There's also a lot of you that have plenty of experience in these areas. There's opportunities for people to be on these connection teams that are beginner, intermediate, or advanced. And it's nice to have those mixed teams. We will be announcing connection projects later in first term. We do three rounds of projects per year. We will do a fall round, which will be announced later in first term. And really you work throughout the second term. And then we will have a really small round that we do over winter break. You all have a nice long winter break. And there's a lot of students that are like, I'm happy to help out and do some work in the, in the January time frame. And so we'll have projects in that winter break. And then we'll also have a round in the spring for students to get engaged that will usually happen to start right at the beginning of third term. There is no commitment to participate in a connection project until you actually see all of the different projects that are available in a particular round. And we ask you to let us know what projects you're interested in and to commit to working on a particular project. So for right now, anybody that's interested, we ask you to complete a consultant profile form to get access to the information. And then when we are announcing projects, we give everybody about a week to review projects and let us know if you're interested or not in working on one of the projects that are available. Again, this is a great opportunity for those of you that are interested in earning academic credit. You can earn academic credit for your time and it can show up on your transcript, but we also have students that do this purely for a volunteer experience, which is also great. Students that work together on teams will have specific roles that they need to work on, and you're also going to be working with a community-based organization to complete that project, and we'll have some support from our source end as well. So it's one of those programs that's been around for a long time that we've gotten great feedback from students and community partners that have been a part of the connection. The service learning, again, at Source, we are the Community Engagement and Service Learning Center. And some of you are familiar with service learning pedagogy. For others, it might be new to you all. But this is a great opportunity for us to take community service activities that have been requested by our partners and really connect this to academics. There is a lot of preparation that goes into service learning, preparing you to do work with our community partners. And we participate as students and with our faculty and our community partners, we participate in critical reflection, really making meaning to course content, your professional goals, your disciplines, and how that connects to the work that you're gonna be doing with community-based organizations. So there's a lot that Source does that utilizes service learning pedagogy. And so we share a little bit more about this definition that comes from Community Campus Partners for Health, which is an international organization. When we take service learning a little further, and we're really focused on critical service learning, where we are working towards social change, being more than a Band-Aid and really changing systems. We also focus on the fact that we have developed and invite you all to participate in forming authentic relationships with our community partners. We are really seeing all that you bring to the table and all that our partners bring and understanding one another as people, 
with various life experiences, with various knowledge and skill sets. This is all a part of how we are developing authentic relationships. And then lastly, this is also a way that we focus on redistributing power. So very frequently in academics working with community, academics are seen as the expert and are driving decisions. We are really looking at our critical service learning as we are all partners, we all contribute, we have all have decisions to agree to make together and building trust together. So we like to flatten out those power dynamics so that we are really sharing in the work that's happening. At the School of Public Health, there are a number of service learning courses that are offered. As a matter of fact, again, within the school's My JHSPH portal, you can actually see a bunch of different courses that are listed by topic. And one of those topics is service learning courses. And you can see all the service learning courses that are being offered at the moment at the Bloomberg School. You can also search up courses that meet the practicum requirement or partially meet the practicum requirement, and there's a few other topics. So again, here's just a short list of a few of those courses that are offered at the school that are service learning courses. And all of these courses have faculty members that have been trained through our team at Source to utilize service learning pedagogy. And our partners from community-based organizations are working with us and the faculty in advance to put together projects that you all would be working on. Um, so great mix of different courses that are available to you to consider as well at the school. The other few things that I wanna mention here is that Source has a very specific approach to how we do community engagement. We've already shared that we have over a hundred partners here in Baltimore City. One of the ways that we like take that number, hundred community-based organizations, how do we really get to know these organizations? And that's a goal of ours, to actually know these organizations. They're not just like a random list on our website. Like we know the people. These are organizations that want to work with our graduate health professional students. And so on our team, each of us at Source is a designated liaison for our different community partners. That means that we're really getting to know the various members of the teams at organizations, know what they're working on, understand their current priorities, and we work together with them to respond to their community identified opportunities. We help connect our partners to our students as well as to our faculty and staff. And through this approach, it's really centering the community first, understanding what the community wants, understanding how the community is available to partner. And we wanna know a bit more about how our partnering community-based organizations are incorporating the populations that they are there to support to have community voice a part of the process. I'll highlight a few upcoming events before I stop sharing the slide deck here and move to taking some questions. Um, some key dates and opportunities just to have on your mind. In a couple of weeks on Wednesday, September 25th, we will host our annual Source Community Involvement Fair. We're still having community-based organizations apply to participate. There will be a few dozen partnering community-based organizations there. Join us in Finestone Hall from 12 to 2.30. It's a really fun event. We will have free ice cream. There's all kinds of prizes that we give out. So it's a great opportunity to come and meet a lot of our partners in person at our fair. And then in early October, we will have our annual celebration of Baltimore Week. There will be a number of different events, including service projects happening, um, our mobile community classroom to go around Balt East Baltimore with us and learn a little bit more. We'll have one of our donation drives will kick off that week, which will be our clothing drive. So be on the lookout for a bunch of different events that we'll be hosting. And then each term, we host a donation drive where you can bring in items that will get delivered out to our partnering organizations. And then throughout the year, we're working with student groups and all types of critical reflection and social justice programming. So there's so much more to come from source as we move throughout the academic year. The last few things that I'll mention here is if you have not already found great ways to stay connected to source, the very first thing that I encourage people to do is to actually subscribe to our source weekly service scoop. You can do that now if you haven't done so already. Just send an email to source at jhu.edu and type subscribe in your in the subject line. 
just make sure that you note that you're a Bloomberg School student. We like to know where everybody is coming from if you're public health, nursing, or medicine, and we'll get you subscribed and you'll see our weekly newsletter that comes out every Tuesday. We're all over social media. You can always follow us and find us at JHU Source. And then we're also available to schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings as you um, have questions and inquiries that we can um, go into more depth with you as well. So oh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here for a moment um, and pause. Let me see if there's questions that I can take from the beginning here. Um, and then I can also show you what our practicum opportunity site looks like. Um, yep. Seeing the entire list. Okay, sorry, I'm reading the chat. Let me tell you what I'm doing. First, I'm reading in the chat. Someone asked, is there any way of seeing the entire list of opportunities on the site? It can be hard to know what search terms to put into the webpage. Okay, so let me jump back. For the practicum opportunity site, there are a lot of different types of opportunities. So I don't think that there is one way of seeing everything within the practicum opportunity site all at once, but you can see by type of opportunity. So for example, when you select type of opportunity, you'll be able to see, you'll select Baltimore Community Practicum course, and you can see everything within the Baltimore Community Practicum course. There's also going to be other types of opportunities that come up in there as well. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a moment. Um, and then one person also asked, is there a deadline for the consultant application? Oh, thank you for asking. That's a great question. So there isn't technically a deadline for the Connection Community Consultants. I will say that we are not looking to announce projects until like early October. So if you want to be considered for the very first round, the fall round, to get in your consultant profile form um, by the end of September. So that way you're in our connection database and you'll receive information about all of the connection projects that we have identified for the fall. We always have students that end up joining us a little bit later in the academic year. So just the sooner that you get your information in to, to us, the sooner you'll be able to see the different projects that are available. Um, are there other questions that I can take for those of you that are joining us live, whether you would like to come off mute, I think we have a decent size group, or feel free to continue to, to drop in the chat. Um, I will also momentarily show you the practicum opportunity site just to give you a sense of how to navigate that. All right, let me share my screen. So that way I can show you the practicum opportunity site. Give me one moment here. And again, continue thinking and dropping in the chat questions that you might have. Okay, so there we go. Okay, Zot, are you seeing our practicum opportunity site now? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so folks, this is the practical opportunity site. I'm already logged in with my public health login. And when you come to the practicum opportunity site, yes, there's going to be some information about the, what the practicum opportunity site is, as well as, you know, some tips for applying. And as you scroll down, it's going to connect you back. For those of you that are MPH students, it could connect you to the MPH practicum website. Is also a way to connect to our Office of Public Health Practice and Training and Source and our Source website. So we encourage you to make note of that. But then there's a couple of ways that you can navigate within the Practicum Opportunity site. The instructions that I gave and that you'll see on our website and all the details there is to go to this Types of Opportunity. And there's a drop down. You'll see Customized Practicum, Practicum with Source Partner. Baltimore Community Practicum, the phase internship, practicum approved course, there's faculty sponsored practicum, and there's also a policy internship. So right there, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of projects. Now, I'm gonna momentarily select Baltimore Community Practicum because it's really what we're pushing right now. If you were to select practicum with a source partner, we don't have anything in there right now because all of our practicum projects at the beginning of the year are a part of our Baltimore Community Practicum course. There will also be other practicum approved courses that just tell you a little bit about that course, but you really won't see the projects unless you are a student enrolled in that course. 
And then throughout the year, there's other times where there are faculty that are searching for students to work on projects, as well as there's the phase internship, which is working with local health departments throughout the state, um, as well as there's a policy internship that will open up a little bit later that you have the opportunity to work with different legislative folks across Baltimore or Annapolis. Um, I'm not really sure if there's DC to be honest off the top of my head, but that changes each year. And a lot of that internship time is gonna happen in third term. So right now I'm just gonna select Baltimore Community Practicum course. It's my type of opportunity. And once I do that, I will click on the search button. When I click on search, you'll be able to see different projects and you'll scroll down and see them all. You can see the list that will show the title, a brief description, which organization, all of the Baltimore Community Practicum course projects are in Baltimore City. Location is basically the location of how you're gonna be working. You're either gonna see some of the projects that say, and most of them this year say some on-site work and off-site work, that's hybrid. Basically, sometimes you'll go in person to organization and sometimes you'll work off-site. Others, you're gonna see it says in-person or remote. And then all the dates are the same. These are the dates of the second and third terms that you'd be working, as well as the estimated hours per week. So all the organizations that have said, I want my student or BCP to work about four hours a week. The vast majority of the projects will select one student. There are a few that we are already talking about having more than one student work on a project. They would have their own unique aspect of the project that they'd work on. So we're making, we'll make those decisions as we see student applications come to be. But just for an example here, see the full description. You'll notice that we have this little box with an arrow. When you click on that, another screen will open up and it will give you the full description of the project. Um, the mission of the organization, a brief description of the practicum, the goals, the type of work that the student intern would do. They'll talk about their skills. Um, they'll give you some information about where the organization is located. A lot of the organizations will also tell you like how to get to the organization. So for here, um, this is CASA. They are located downtown in Power Plant Live and you can actually get there very easily through local public transportation. It's literally, you can take the Metro from the hospital here, um, Johns Hopkins Hospital, and go to one stop to the Shot Tower station. Um, so a lot of the organizations are giving you that type of information in their descriptions. And you'll also notice um, the application procedure will also say for all the projects that you will have till Tuesday, September 17th, to apply and it will give you the, the link to the actual application and it gives you a quick reminder of those dates that you'd be interviewing and all that great stuff. The other thing that I wanna show is as you are selecting the projects and particularly the ones that you're selecting to put into your application is that there is this little print box at the very top of each project description page I encourage you, and you'll see it in the application, we're always reminding people, print it, save it, save for your records, the full project description. That's because once the deadline passes with for projects that are listed in the practicum opportunity site, they're no longer gonna be visible in the practicum opportunity site. So once a deadline passes, those projects are automatically removed from the Practicum Opportunity Site because we will not be selecting, we will not be accepting additional applications from students at that point in time. So let me stop share for a moment and see if I confused you more or if that was helpful. Um, and if there are other questions that I can answer while we are in the Zoom room for those of you live and together. Okay, so again, I, I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording in just a moment here. Uh, if, if people need to run to other opportunities, feel free. Um, again, we will do a quick follow-up, share out the slides in the recording and give you the direct links to these different sites. And we're always available to, to help out. So I'm gonna stop recording, but we'll hang and continue to answer questions that you all might have. Thanks so much, we're looking forward to seeing everybody's application 
don't be shy about reaching out for questions.